Hi everyone, my name is Carl Goode and I'm going to show you how to make a pie chart in Adobe Illustrator CC. Over on the left you have a tool palette and one of these little tools is a charts tool. You'll see it looks like a bar chart. If you hold down the mouse button you will be able to pop out a pie graph tool. I'm going to go ahead and select that. When I draw a box on the desktop here what I get is a spreadsheet. Now I can import data using this icon here on the top left here or I can just type it into this spreadsheet directly, which is what I'm going to do, because I'm going to keep this as simple, and I'm going to make up the data. It's not real stuff, but it'll show you how to make one. I'm going to go ahead and type in some fruit names. Everything you type into the spreadsheet will occur up here into this box up here, and it gives you a one. It doesn't know what you want to do, so it just automatically gives you a one. I'm going to go ahead and type in apples, pears, uh, kiwi, it's short and fast, <laughs> and uh, grapes. We'll add bananas, bananas, there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that they're maybe, let's say it's price per pound or something, but I'm just going to keep this simple and go one, two, three, four, five, just to get some data in here. You want to never want to have it put icon, like symbols like a dollar sign or commas into the spreadsheet. It only recognizes periods and whole numbers. So if I go over here and click on the check mark at the top right of the input box, you're going to find something wrong. When you click on that, it looks like circles. This is a very valid chart type and it does represent the proportions that I typed in there. So in order to make a pie chart, you don't want to enter your data coming down the way you would typically, typically enter data into a spreadsheet. It actually has to be tabbed straight across. I'm going to go ahead and click this icon here that says transpose row and column, and that now puts it in the proper format to be a pie chart. And I'm going to click the check mark and there it is. Adobe has not realized that they are a design company yet, and so they make these really ugly charts. I'm going to go ahead and close this window by clicking in the red button here on the top left of the window. And I now have a chart that is still linked to the data. So if I decide I want to take out bananas, I can right click on this, scroll down to the word data, open it up, and there are my bananas. I can just decide, you know, I don't want bananas in there. And you can see that it automatically, I click the check mark, it automatically updates it. So it is linked to the data. And I want to bring these legends, they're called, these, the key, the, the labels from the key into my pie chart wedges. So I'm going to right click again and go to the word type. And up here you can actually change it to a bar chart or something like that. We're going to keep it a pie chart. And we're going to go down here to standard legend and we're going to say legends in wedges and say OK. And it pops them into the middle. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. And now uh, pie charts, it's really important to know that pie charts are supposed to be 100% of whatever it is you're talking about. Or maybe this is the 100% of the fruit I purchased today, it's all sitting on my counter. You can use whole numbers in, in pie chart wedges. You don't have to use percentages. It just has, it just has to be 100% of whatever it is you're talking about. We're going to pretend that we wanted to shrink this into fit in a certain space, like on a column on a website. And I'm going to come over here to my resize tool, scale tool over here. I'm going to click on that, and it has a two-part process. The first thing you get is a crosshairs. And that's like driving a nail into the point in the chart that you want it to stay stationary at. I'm going to click on that first point, and you can see that little blue crosshairs you get. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to shrink it, and you can see how that stays in place. You notice, you can see that in the blue image that it is not staying circular. And so I'm going to hold the shift key down so that it, retain, it retains its shape and form, the circle. You don't ever want to create a pie chart in perspective. It distorts the data. It doesn't allow people to actually see the proportions by seeing the wedges as they are. Uh, people have to actually read the data and it becomes, it becomes nothing more than decorative. I'm going to zoom in a little more on that by clicking on the magnifying glass or hitting command or control plus plus. I think my type is a little too small. The, I have the entire chart selected here and I can now just go command T and just automatically enlarge the type to say eight point. So once I know that the data is exactly how I want it and I don't need to change the data in the spreadsheet, I'm going to go ahead and say object ungroup this and it's going to say, you know, this is going to won't be, you know, linked to the data and you say that's fine. There are different levels of ungrouping and if I grab the pie chart, the wedges are all grouped together still also. I can go back and say arrangement ungroup again and now each pie chart will be an individual wedge. You, and same with the type, but I Right now, I think I'll just leave the type alone. I could color these pie charts, these wedges in different colors, but I'm going to keep them all the same color. I'm going to go ahead and draw a box, a selection box with a black arrow around the entire thing, but I want to deselect the type, so I'm going to hold the shift key down and hit deselect that. And I only want to color these wedges, not the type. So I'm going to go back to my swatches menu here, and 
instead of picking one of these creepy colors they have here, I'm gonna actually click in the little box in the upper right hand corner and you'll see that you get these options. And I'm gonna switch down to Open Swatch Library and you have a lot of different things here. I'm gonna click Earth Tones, which has some all these colors that mix well together, they match. And I'm gonna make this a color, making sure that the fill color is in the foreground, not the line color. And I'm gonna select a color for the pie chart. I'll make it this tan color. And I'm gonna make the lines white. So I'm gonna bring the lines to the foreground here and I'm gonna click white. And so now I have white lines. I'm gonna click on the type tool up here and I'm gonna to go to the word grapes. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign and call this $2. And then I'm going to go ahead and select that $2. I can drag across it or double click, triple click actually. And then I can hit Command T for my type again. And I can make that a larger font, like 12 point regular. I, I click 12 point, I've filled that in the type size box and I'm gonna go ahead and make that bold. And now I says grapes, $2. There's a bit of distinction in the typefaces there, which is nice, but there's still too much space between the two. So I'm gonna select that again, and I'm gonna to go to the, the line spacing tool right here to the right of the size, and I'm gonna make that about 12 point also, and you can see that that pops it right back down. And I think now would be a good time for me to ungroup these fonts, because actually, I might wanna move them around individually, and I'm gonna, I don't wanna to have to use the direct selection arrow to do that. So I'm gonna select these and go, I can actually right click and say, ungroup right here. So now each word can move around as I, as I want and I can make it look exactly perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and select, triple click on the $2 and copy that, Command or Control C, depending on whether you have a Mac or a PC. And I'm gonna to go to the pairs word here, and I'm gonna hit return and paste, and I'm gonna to click to the apples and hit return and hit paste. And I'll do that with the Kiwi and hit return and hit paste. And so you see now I've formatted, I have that formatted type for each one. So there we have a pie chart and very quickly I'm going to go ahead and put a little headline above it by clicking the type tool. I'm going to put a headline above it and I'm going to say fruit prices. It's a, I want to put a, a sub headline under this that says you know the, pri the fruit price of the fruit I bought today or whatever I want. I'm going to just put in some fake type. It's always good to keep type in the same box if you can. You can do it as individual type blocks too. That's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and return and then paste in some dummy type that I had. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that type and I'm going to reformat it down to a point and I'm gonna make it not bold and I'm gonna make it tighter on the letting. Uh, I'm gonna make it about nine point letting, et cetera, more text here. And then I also wanna make sure that I put in um, price per pound, otherwise the numbers mean nothing. So I'm gonna say price per pound and I, I think I'll make that italic just to separate it from the other type, make it a price per pound. I could add a little bit of extra space there if I wanted by adding a little more letting, maybe 10 point letting. And I think I wanna make my title a little bit bigger. So I think I'll make that actually uh, 16 point. I'm gonna go ahead and drag across and select all the elements in my pie chart and not the headline. And I'm gonna hit Command G or Control G and group things together and by the way, grouping together will not relink it back to the data. It's law that happened that ended long ago. And now if I click on the, the headline up here along this column, you'll see there's some align tools. There's one for centering. You can also go window align. And now those are centered. And if I want, I can put a tint behind this, behind everything. Down here in the bottom of this toolbar window, you'll see two icons. One is for draw in front of, one is for draw behind. I want to draw behind all of this. So I'm clicking the draw behind button icon. Click on a box now and draw and it draws behind. It's remembering the last color I used. So I'm gonna go back and reopen my swatch library, my earth tones and, and get perhaps a darker color. Maybe I'll make it a darker blue here. And now the, my, my headline is a little illegible. So I think what I'll do there to make it look nice is I'll go ahead and uh, fill that in white, but it's a little glaringly white. I think I'm gonna give it a little bit of transparency so that it picks up a bit of the blue behind it and it'll soften that a little bit. See, that looks pretty nice. And once again, I can just select all of this stuff now and then say align centers and everything just becomes perfect. So that's how you make a pie chart, folks. Hope you enjoyed it.